Okay, so act one, scene five. This will be the scene when Romeo and Juliet finally meet and instantly fall in love. Um, you can see some of Romeo's character traits in this scene, his impulsivity, um, the fact that he can move so quickly from Rosaline to Juliet. We're going to see Tybalt um, see Romeo at the party and get angry and want to deal with him, but Mr. Capulet says, no, don't ruin my party. So that plants the seed for Tybalt later to get um, justice or revenge on Romeo for crashing his family's party. Um, at the beginning of this scene, it's just a bunch of talk back and forth with the servants. So we have Peter coming in. They're getting ready for the party. Where's Pot Van, he says, that he helps not to take away. He shift a trencher. He scrape a trencher. When good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands, and they unwashed too, tis a foul thing. Away with the joint stools. Remove the court cupboard. Look to the plate. Good thou, save me a piece of march pain, and, as thou loves me, let the porter let in Susan Grindstone and Nell, Anthony, and Potpan. Ay, boy, ready. You are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for, in the great chamber. We cannot be here and there, too. Cheerly, boys, be brisk a while, and the longer liver take all. So then they ha head out, and now it's Capulet. Um, he's welcoming everyone into the party and you can see he's a very good host. He wants everyone to have a good time. He jokes with the ladies about not being able to dance um, and, and, and taunting them to dance so that they'll have a good time. Welcome, gentlemen, ladies that have their toes. Ah, my mistresses, which of you all unplagued with corns will walk about with you? Will you deny to dance? She that makes dainty, she I'll swear hath corns. Am I come near ye now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor, and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as would please. But tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. You are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. And then the, the music starts and they start dancing. And Mr. Capulet's still going on. A hall, a hall, give room, and foot it, girls. More light, you knaves, and turn the tables up, and quench the fire, the room is grown too hot. Ah, sirrah, this unlooked-for sport comes well. Nay, sit, nay, sit, good cousin Capulet, for you and I are past our dancing days. How long is it now since last yourself and I were in a mask? Oh, by your lady, thirty years. What, man, tis not so much, tis not so much, tis since the nuptials of Luc Lucentio. Come Pentecost as quickly as it will, some five and twenty years, and then we mast. No, tis more, tis more. His son is elder, sir, his son is thirty. Will you tell me that? His son would was, a, was but a ward two years ago. So then now we move to um, Romeo. So he sees Juliet right now and he's asking about her. What lady is that which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. So shows a... Sh shows a snowy dove trooping with crows, as yonder lady o'er her fellows shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers, make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? Forswear its sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. Now here's Tybalt who notices Romeo. Oh, this by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What, dares the slave come hither, covered with an antic face, to fleer in scorn at our solemnity? Now, by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. And Capulet sees this and interrupts. Why, how now, kinsman, wherefore storm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he. That villain, Romeo. 
Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman, and to say truth, Verona brags him of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all the town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, the which if thou respect, show a fair presence and put off these frowns an ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. Oh, he shall be endured. What good man, boy. I say he shall. Go to. Am I the master here or you? Go to. He'll not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You will set cock a hoop. You'll be the man. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to. You are a saucy boy. Is it so indeed? This trick may chance to scathe you. I know what. You must contrary me. Mary, tis time. And then he's he's intertwining this conversation. He's smoothing it over with his guests, making it seem like nothing is happening. So he says to his guests, Well said, my hearts. And then he goes back to Tybalt. You are a prince, Cox. Go. Be quiet, or more light, more light. For shame, I'll make you quiet. What, cheerly, my hearts. The music plays um, and the guests start to dance. Patience perforce with willful collar meeting makes my flesh tremble in their different greeting. I shall withdraw, but this intrusion shall now seeming sweet convert to bitterest gall. All right, and then for the rest of this scene, we're going to have um, Romeo and Juliet now. So Romeo ha has now um, gone up to Juliet and he's touching her hand and they, they flirt with each other. Um, he talks about how he's not worthy of her and she's like this holy shrine, this holy temple that he shouldn't be touching. And she, she brings it back to religion. Oh, sure, even beggars are allowed to worship holy shrines. So it's just flirting back and forth, um, but with a religious undertone. So he says to her as he takes her hand, If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Oh, good pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Have not saint lips and holy palmer's too? I pilgrim, that lips, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. Then move not, while my prayers affect. I take. So then he kisses her. Thus from my lips by thine, my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they took. Sin from thy lips, O oh, trespass sweetly, urge, give me my sin again. And then they kiss again. You kiss by the book. And then the nurse interrupts right now. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. And Juliet starts walking away and that's when Romeo starts wondering her mother I'm at the Capulet house and he starts putting this all together and he says what is her mother and the nurse says Mary bachelor her mother is the lady of the house and a good lady and a wise and virtuous I nursed her daughter that you talked with all I tell you he that can lay hold of her shall have the chinks and then that's when he figures it out he says this to himself, is she a Capulet? Oh dear account, my life is my foe's debt. So up to then um, everyone's leaving the party right now. So Benvolio walks up to him. Away, be gone. The sport is at the best. I so I fear the more is my unrest. And then Capulet s still trying to make everyone have a good time. He doesn't want the party to end. And he's asking them, where are you going so soon? Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet towards. Oh, yes. Is it even so? Why, then, I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Come on, then. Let's to bed. Ah, sirrah, by my fay, it waxes late. I'll to my rest. 
And then now we have um, Juliet figuring out who Romeo is. Come hither, nurse. What is yond gentleman? Well, that's the son and heir of old Tiberio. What, what's he now is going out of the door? Mary, that I think be young Petru Petruchio. And what's he that follows here that would not dance? Mm, I know not. Go, ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo and a Montague, the son of your great enemy. And now Juliet whispers under her breath, Oh, my only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love, it is to me that I must love a loathed enemy. What's this? What's this? The nurse is asking. What are you saying under your breath? And she, Juliet covers it up. Oh, a rhyme. I learned even now of one I danced with all. So then someone calls Juliet and she said, the nurse says, anon, anon. Come, let's away. The strangers are all gone. So that's the end of uh, act one.